All right, I want to extend the greetings to you all in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We just ask your blessing upon us today as we gather together and look into your word, Father. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, in this time of the world, Father, to keep our eyes focused and our hearts centered upon you. Lord, fill us with your spirit. Lord, give us wisdom as we open your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want to, let's just open our Bibles here to Re Revelation chapter 20, and verse 11. Just want to take a verse there and or two. Verse 11 says, Then I saw a great white throne in him who sat upon it from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which are written in the books according to their deeds. What I want to talk about this morning is, for one, just a reminder of the judgment day that we read about and we think about sometimes, but it's always something way far away from us. It's just something we talk about or we think about try not to think about but it is something that is going to happen and just look back at all the people in the world who've lived up until us that day has come for every one of them and how few of them were probably actually prepared or for the reality of that day for themselves. It's so easy for us to think about these things when we're at church for a little while, but it's a little like, it's just so easy to just let that kind of fall away We talk about being hearers of the word and doers of the word, the differences. And here is a very vivid area of that, that it's so easy to be a hearer about it, but not letting it really penetrate our lives or not letting it really have an effect of being a true doer of the word. It's so easy for us to hear about these things and know about these things and know how to say the right things and know how to talk about the right things, but to really be prepared for that day. It said, the dead, small and great, are all going to stand before the Lord. It said that heaven and earth will flee away and there will be nothing but you, me. Nothing else will matter. All the things that we think are so important, all the things that we think are so good and great will all fall away. As we think about these things that the young people 
talked about love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. You know, sometimes we think about loving our neighbor, but loving the Lord is the first one that comes. And it's easy to get all involved in keeping the rules, thinking that we're loving the Lord, but to love the Lord is just to live the way that He wants us to today. Remembering and realizing that He is our first priority in life. It's so easy to be so caught up in all kinds of different things that we just don't have the time or don't have the room or the desire to have Him first in our lives. You know, we talk about the Christmas story and the, the story where he, there was no room for Him in the end. And it's just so easy for those things, these things, this life to crowd out any room for the Lord not in Jerusalem during a busy time, but in the very center of our own lives. We talk about Him. We say that He's first in our lives. We say that we do whatever He wants us to do. But then soon as the slightest little problem comes up, He goes out the window and we do what we need to do. Just want us to think about these things this morning. In James, it talks about verse James chapter one, verse twenty two. It says, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearly, hearers that delude themselves. Prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers that delude themselves. We think delusion could never happen to me. Other people get deceived other people are deluded but that's the thing about deception that's the subtleness of it that it hits us and we don't even know it it hits us and we're looking at somebody else thinking how deceived they are that's why it's important to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. For anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he is. Here's a person who wakes up every once in a while and sees, hey, oh, the judgment day. I better get all prepared about that. I better start loving my neighbor. I better start loving the Lord. You get kind of excited about it. But then you go away. The cares of this world just kind of drowned all that out. All of that just kind of goes through the window and you forget what kind of man you are. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, <coughs> this man will be blessed in what he does. How many things we become effectual doers at. I mean, we 
take pride in being able to take care of things, being effectual doers of what's right in front of us. You know, we get the job done. But what about effectually doing the word? What about effectually hearing the Lord? Are we as efficient at loving the Lord with all our heart as we are at our jobs or our duties or our responsibilities? Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. <clears throat> Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. I want to read a song we sing once in a while, talk about it a little bit. It says, I dreamed that the great judgment morning and had dawned and the trumpet had blown. You know, we may think about this, this man just dreamed this or whatever, but the point is, is it was, it had become a, a reality. And whether he just made all this up about a dream or actually had a dream, The point is, is it, does it become a reality to us or not? It's a hope that this might be a reminder to us to live with this in our thoughts. That the judgment day, the judgment morning is going to be a real, real reality to us one of these days. That's the point. Is it a reality to us? I dreamed that the great judgment morning had dawned and the trumpet had blown. Had blown. I dreamed that the nations had gathered to judgment before the white throne. Everyone will be there. It won't be, oh, I don't want to be there, so I won't be there. When the trumpet blows, you will be there. You will be there. It won't be, oh, I don't want to, be, I don't want to go. I don't feel like going today. I don't, you know, I just don't want to go. But there will be no choice in the matter. You will go. Like it or not. Dragged, kicking and screaming. Throwing a big tantrum, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. You will go. Everyone will be there. Presidents, kings, billionaires, poor people, religious people, drug addicts. Everyone will be there. From the throne came a bright shining angel and he stood on the land and the sea and he swore with his 
hand raised to heaven, that time was no longer to be. What we think is so precious will one day be no more. The clocks will all be useless. Time will go on forever. Eternity. We're all headed there. Like it or not, that's where we're going. And then the refrain, and oh, what a weeping and wailing as the lost were told of their fate. They cried for the rocks and the mountains. They prayed, but their prayer was too late. You see, this idea of being a hearer and not a doer is, I will, one of these days, get around to serving the Lord. I will, one of these days, how many things we've got plans and ideas of getting around to that thing over there, getting around to doing something. I'll do it one of these days. One of these days, I'll take care of it. One of these days, I'll get to it. That's the theme of eternity. One of these days, I'll do it. That's the theme of being a hearer and not a doer. Is one of these days. I'll take care of that. I'll have time to do what I really ought to be doing one of these days. How many people have waited till I'll have more time when I get a little older to do those things that never found the time to do them. Never found the time to treat your neighbor as yourself. I will one of these days. Oh, if it's convenient, I'll take care of it when I can get to it. That's the whole part of being a doer. The difference between being a doer and a hearer. They prayed, but their prayer was too late. I remember there was a man that lost a son. And one of the things that he told the story is that his, his boy had flew, flown a kite and it got stuck up in a tree. And the boy every night would say, can you get my kite down for me? Can you get my kite down for me? And he said, no, not today. I will soon, soon. I'll do it soon. And every night he came, wanted his dad to go get the kite down for him. And then one day there was an accident. The little boy was killed. And as the father drove into the driveway, that evening, the kite fell out of the tree. Didn't need the kite anymore. The realization that it was too late to do what he needed to do. They prayed, but their prayer was too late. The rich man was there, but his money had melted and vanished away. A pauper, he stood in the judgment. His debts were too heavy to pay. The great man was there, but his greatness, when death came, was left far behind. The angel that opened the records, not a trace 
of his greatness could find. The widow was there with the orphans. God heard and remembered their cries. No sorrow in heaven forever. God wiped all the tears from their eyes. The gambler was there and the drunkard and the man that had sold him the drink with the people who gave him the license together in hell they did sink. The moral man came to the judgment but self-righteous rags would not do. The man who had crucified Jesus had passed off his moral men too. The soul that had put off salvation, not tonight, not today. I'll do what I need to by and by. No time. I'm going to change the thing here just a little bit. No time to think of or to actually do what I should be doing. In the last phrase it says, but at last I had found time to die. But at last I had found time to die. It's so easy just to think about these things and keep them in the back of our minds. Be so busy that we don't have to do, have time to do what we need to do. But at last, we'll have time to die. May the Lord add his blessings.